Welcome to Chapter 11, Coordinate Systems. There are two types of coordinate systems that we need to worry about in this course. One is unprojected or geographic coordinate systems. The other is projected, which is what we use when we're creating flat maps. As you can see from the diagram right here, this unprojected coordinate system would be a geographic coordinate system based on Latin long and it's for a spheroid. The problem is getting that transformed to a flat map without drastically altering the view, shape, distance, area of the features. And we'll get into that a little bit further, but you can think of a projection as a little light bulb inside the globe shining out to, for example, a cone or a cylinder in this case, uh, and making these lines of latitude and longitude. It's taking the lines of lat and long and pasting them on a, a flat surface, so it's 2D. I'm going from 3D up here to 2D, and that's where we get some changes in what everything looks like. In this slide, we can see that there's three different coordinate systems represented to help the user. There's degrees, which would be a geographic coordinate system. There are meters, which would be a universal transverse mercator projection. And then there's also feet, which could be a state plane projected system. Here again, in ArcGIS, it makes it even easier. This is a USGS map with the star on exactly the same place, or technically the same place. You notice that it's a little off here. But in the bottom right-hand corner of ArcMap, we would see this number in feet for state plane, this number in degrees for GCS, geographic coordinate system, and meters for a UTM coordinate system. Coordinate systems and data. Every feature class stores X and Y's values based on a specific coordinate system. And again, it may be projected or unprojected. You can think of unprojected as geographic coordinate system and projected as a projected coordinate system. Up here we have a state plane and it's projected. Down here we have a coordinate system where it's GCS World Geographic System 1984. And we'll get further into the details as we move through the chapter. Spatial reference. Every data set requires a complete description of its coordinate system for proper display and analysis. There's a geographic coordinate system and datum, a projection if one is used, a storage unit which is set based on the system, a domain which is a maximum allowable X and Y values, and a resolution or the precision of the data. Measuring degrees. This is how the degrees are measured in the geographic coordinate system in latitude and longitude. And we don't need to drill into this for too much detail, but remember that geographic coordinate system, GCS, as I'll refer to it from now on, is latitude and longitude. And you can pause the slideshow if you want to revisit, if you want to read some more of this in the presentation. And then play when you're ready. GCS properties measured in angular degrees as I've stated earlier. Length of longitude degree varies with latitude. It's commonly portrayed as a planar coordinate system in GIS using decimal degrees which introduces distortion. Notice how Greenland, for example, is huge in the planar coordinates, whereas in the GCS, it's not distorted. And this is because these lines up here have to be spread apart to even spacing 
and it stretches Greenland, so to speak, for the display. Precision for unprojected data. They're stored in degrees. They require high resolution for good results, and that's we need to keep that in mind when recording and transmitting. One degree at the equator equals 110 kilometers. 0 0.001 degree at the equator equals 110 meters. And 0 0.000001 degree at the equator equals 0.1 meters. What this states for us is we need a high resolution. We can't just say it's accurate to within one degree of latitude or longitude because one degree equals 110 kilometers. Ellipsoids. Not too much to talk about here except that the Earth is not a perfect circle. And there's a true sphere here. And it, even the, the Earth itself is not a perfect sphere. It's actually an ellipsoid, which we'll get into further. Here's a geoid. It's not even a purpose perfect ellipsoid. So the, it's a geoid. And you can see the discrepancies by the maroon lines, which makes it very hard to map. And it even states so down here. It's uh, The geoid is too difficult to map, so the ellipsoid is used. And with that, we get errors. The datum. We won't get too much into datum, but know that a datum is required. And we notice down here that this particular datum is bad for South America when it's good for North America. That's why we have a North American datum that works for North America. It keeps things much more in line. And most of this is taken care of through ArcGIS software. We don't have to do any calculations. The software does most of it for us. Datum definition. A datum definition includes a particular ellipsoid, major and minor axis chosen, the adjustment or fit, translation of center, and together these define the geographic coordinate system. Datum used in North America. There was a 1927, which is NAD 1927 or NAD 27. Then there's the NAD 83. It's the most popular right now for mapping. It's based on the GRS 80 spheroid. We also have a HARN, which is High Accuracy Regional Network. And we will use state plane HARN when we get into the state plane coordinate system, when we drill down to Tacoma, for example. And there's World Geodetic Survey. 1984 and that's what most of your GPS units are set at. If you have a GPS unit, chances are the default is set for WGS 84. Projections and datum. This is a great a good slide to show the difference between NAD 83 and NAD 27. They are not even remotely close to each other. Here it says they're typically off by 0 to 300 meters. The roads, yellow, do not at all line up with the aerial photograph. And the photo is in NAD 27 and the roads are in NAD 83. For GPS users, I already mentioned that you need to have your GPS set. Um, usually in WGS and there was a question in one of the assignments about what they could do to Jane and Bill I think to get their coordinate systems lined up or how they could get their units to line up. Datum transformations this is all done in the computer you just have to make the right choice and in this course I'll help you make the right choice and all the labs are written to help you make the right choice you just have to go through the process and do it. 
Moving on to projected coordinate systems, the one used most often for mapping because it's designed for a flat surface. Again, we have the light bulb in the globe shining out to a piece of paper and then the paper is rolled out. Here are three different types of projections. We have a cylindrical, a conic, and azimuthal. We don't really use the azimuthal very much. We use conic and cylindrical. Cylindrical projections. This is transverse mercator and that's one of the more popular ones. This is transverse cylindrical which puts the shapes of the continents different than what you're used to. Which is why this would look more familiar to you. Conic projections Elbers equal area conic is useful when you need to maintain equal area. There's an equidistant conic, so if you want your distance to remain the same. And normally that's how you'll choose your projection. To be honest, most of the time you're going to use state plane and south for anything Tacoma and south in Washington and state plane north for anything up near Seattle. As smoothal projections, just two different ways to look at things, two more diff two more ways. Again, we won't be using either of these, so I'll move on. These are some special projections. I'm sure you see maps like this. There are several popular ones out there. These three are not that popular. Normally you'll see a combination of the Fuller and the Bonnie Pseudoconic. Pseudo It'll look similar to something between these two. But just know that there's many available. Pro projection parameters. <clears throat> many are supported. And again, for the most part, we'll be using ones using Pacific Northwest types of projections, ones that work for us in the Pacific Northwest, State Plain North, State Plain South, and um, actually a new one this week, in not new, but a different one this week in your lab. Central Meridian, there's the one we're most familiar with up here, and then here's one that's going uh, it's minus 100 degrees from the prime meridian. Reference latitude. Latitude which serves as the y equals zero origin for the map. Often the equator is used. And we're going to see a, a, something different from that coming up in the next couple slides. Here we have the equator used and then we have the standard parallels used. Cylinder and cone is secant to the globe. It has two standard parallels parallels and there's no distortion along the parallels. The distortion increases with distance from these standard parallels. Whereas on this side the distortion increases as it gets further away from the equator. Faults easting and northing, you won't have to deal with these numbers. I'm going to skip on through this slide. Coordinate units, I already mentioned those. No need to dwell on it in this slide. Distortion, we've talked about. This is best for area. This is best for distance. This preserves shape and this preserves direction. Some more projection distortions. You can see how they distort the world, the earth. And there's compromise projections, such as the Robinson projection. I believe you used that in chapter one. And it distorts all four properties a little.
the extent of spatial data set of a spatial data set indicates the range of x, y values present in the data. So here we have a much bigger range because it's the entire Earth flattened out, and here's a much smaller range. Raster coordinate systems. We're not going to be dealing with rasters in this lesson, but you will in lesson 8. Rep, uh, raster georeferencing, we have an XY location, which usually starts in the top left, which is unique because most of the time you, you probably think of the XY origin or the zero, 00 being down here in the bottom left. But technically, for rasters and georeferencing, we use this location up here. Raster coordinates. This is South Dakota topography in two coordinate systems. One is in geographic coordinate system. One is in South Dakota state plain south. Re remember that this isn't the projection that we'll use for Tacoma. We'll use Washington state plain south. But just notice that the numbers are different even though it's at the top of the uh, top left of the grid. Local rasters, here's UTM zone 13N, and here's State Plain South. So you can see that there's quite a bit of difference going from two pretty similar projections, and we'll do that particularly in Lab 3. We'll move from a State Plain data with State Plain South and transform it into UTM zone 10, because UTM zone 10 is the UTM that we use in Washington. Georeferenced, the rasters need to be georeferenced. You can't just take a picture and start using it in GIS. Must be georeferenced. I'm not going to get into this slide. It's a little bit too detailed for what we need to do in this course. I'm also going to going to skip case two. It's not as relative as it needs. We don't need to be this detailed with the information at this point. Rectification, you will actually do this in the certificate program, the intermediate and advanced GIS, you'll actually do some rectification, you'll fix or your ortho rectify some images. RMS error, I'm going to skip. You can read that if you'd like. Resampling, I talked about this a little bit in class. It's similar to a JPEG. When you save it and resave it and resave it, you're going from this nice image with multiple colors, and if, if you resample to a smaller grid, as this is, things get broken apart and you end up with a, a blurrier image because you've just got these nine cells instead of the multiple cells that we have here. So we go from 16 4 by 4 to 9 3 by 3 and it clouds the image somewhat. Resampling methods we don't need to get into. I'll tell you which ones to use. The book will tell you which ones to use. It's it's good to read this but at this point you can pause the slideshow and continue on. I don't need to read the slide to you. Projecting rasters, again, no need for me to read this. You can read it if you'd like and then start up the slideshow when you're ready. Estimating GCS cell size, I'm going to skip through this as well. It gets a little bit into the math of it and for our purposes, the software will do the work. I'll help you make the right decisions. Common projection systems. <coughs> Commonly used coordinate systems. Geographic, UTM, and state plane. That's what we use. We have GPS units up here. We have UTM that we used here in this lab, lab 3, starting soon, and state plane for probably the rest of our labs. 
geographic coordinate systems. I've already talked about this slide. I don't need to get into it any further. This is good to show that universal, universal transverse Mercator, Mercator 10 is us. You notice that the 10 is through here, and that's why we use 10, UTM 10 in lab 3. And notice that the distortion is minimal within each zone, and in our case, we're, our zone is up in this area, and that's what we're trying to eliminate is the distortion. State plane system we'll use quite extensively starting lab 4 and beyond because there's there's smaller coordinate systems which means there's much less distortion than the UTM zone 10. These are all the state plane zones for your interest you may pause and check them out. Some states only have one when they're small some states only have one when they're big. Montana has its just one. Notice how Hawaii is split up quite a bit, as is Alaska, but Alaska is huge. Choosing projections. We're going to whiz through this rather quickly because I'm going to help you choose. But we'll talk a little bit how projections are chosen in the subsequent slides. We've already talked about these three. We'll proceed for large scale maps, local, city, county maps, smaller states, and notice large scale means more detail. Don't get confused by thinking large scale means the entire country. The entire country would be something like this. Projection for small scales, continents, and countries, as I was saying before. Problem solutions. Oregon covers two UTM zones and two state plane zones, so no single one is best. And that is also the case with Washington right up here. We have two UTM zones and two state plane zones. Notice how the state plane is north and south and UTM is east and west. Some more problem solutions. We don't need to worry about Louisiana, nor Kansas. We're not dealing with other countries in this class, so we'll move on. Same with Turkey. Thanksgiving projection. Not really. That's the country. Caution. These solutions will give you somewhat better accuracy, but there's other solutions. Again, we're not worrying about that, so let's move on. We're going to talk about ArcGIS and coordinate systems and labeling them. Every data set should have a label that matches the XY values in the file. Labels may be viewed in our catalog or our map. Labels always have a GCS because every coordinate system is based on a geographic coordinate system. And the labels may also have a projection and its parameters. And these are its parameters. The spatial reference. Every data set requires a complete description of its coordinate system for proper display. We'll start out with a shapefile that does not have any spatial reference. Technically, it comes from the census without a spatial reference. We have to add that spatial reference in. And you will actually do that in the lab this week, lab three. These are other aspects of the spatial reference. And you'll actually be pasting information into your write-up that contains all of this information. Coordinate system in ArcMap. Here we have two different items we have a projected coordinate system on the left and a non or unprojected coordinate system on the right these small values indicate indicate degrees and these large values indicate meters with the m some more parameters you will actually be pasting this type of information again into your lab write up 
Remember that every coordinate system has a GCS even if it is projected. It will there has to be a geographic coordinate system and then above that we have a projection. And you know that when we go beyond that to a projection it goes away from decimal degrees and into meters or feet. Examine the coordinate system. We right click on the layer we go to properties and click on the source tab and this is where we have decimal degrees so we know it's a geographic coordinate system and the one it is based on is GCS WGS 1984 here is the datum it tells us the prime meridian which is Greenwich England and the angular unit of course is degree In our catalog, it's very similar what it looks like. As far as properties, we go into the XY coordinate system and it tells us the name. This is a projected coordinate system. And we'll move on. On the fly projection, and this is what ArcMap does to quote unquote help us. It projects data and by projecting data it it lines up everything even though they aren't lined up and that's why when you clear the on-the-fly projection which I'll show you how to do it separates the layers and all of a sudden we don't have data on top of data we have data on top of open space and open space on top of data on the fly projection in this diagram it looks complicated but it's actually very simple what they're telling us is there's some data in UTM, there's some data in GCS, and there's some data in state plane. Technically, these are within 300 meters of each other, and it could be even further away, which means that none of these items would line up. What ArcMap does, and this is a picture of ArcMap, is it projects on the fly. So it brings all of these data items back to one unique projection. And what it does, in, in this case, the data frame coordinate system is Oregon Statewide Lambert. So it converts all of these on the fly to Oregon Statewide Lambert. So if we were to right click on layers and look at the properties, this is what we'd see, Oregon Statewide Lambert. Although if we clicked on hospitals, parks, and counties, they w could be and are, as according to what they're telling us, they are different. And this is just ArcMap trying to help. It's making them appear together even though they aren't together. And our goal is to always fix that. We do not want to project on the fly. It's just better practice to get the layers to line up ahead of time before you even bring them into ArcMap. This slide is another refresher. GCS units are decimal degrees, projected units usually meters or feet. Display units default to map units can be set by user. I, you may have done that in Lab 1. We won't be resetting that from now on. Let's continue. This is a another repeat type of slide. Setting the display units, we won't be dealing with that, so let's move on. Understanding the units, it, it tells us to be careful not to confuse them. You may read this if you'd like, but this is not applicable, applicable to our situation. Setting the data frame coordinate system, we do not do this. What we will do though is clear the data frame. So here's the data frame properties I talked about. Right clicking on the data frame and then going to the coordinate system and clear. By clearing, we're taking away the on the fly projection that exists within this data frame and relying on these two items to line up on their own. And you'll see some demos of that in class and also in your lab. You'll actually complete that. Finding a coordinate system. 
you will do this in the lab so I will skip over this for now modifying we won't be modifying the coordinate system so we'll, let's move on ways to set the spatial reference you may select it and then navigate to it you may import it from a different file or different layer I, I do that often to make sure they always match you may create a new coordinate system which probably never do or you may modify a coordinate system which you probably won't do either projecting data permanently projecting data creates a new spatial data file this is what you're doing in the lab it does not change the original file it recalculates each X and Y point into the new coordinate system and units and it labels the new file with the new coordinate system and by labels it means what you see is what you get and in the metadata which is data about data it's actually changed you will use the project or you may have already used it in lab 3 and that is found in the toolbox projections and transformations feature project that's when a shapefile already has a known coordinate system you use project the project tool I already talked about we go from here to the project tool this is just blown up a little bit it shows you the input coordinate system sometimes in an ideal world sometimes it does not which it's optional so we don't need to worry about it if it doesn't show up you rename it and then you choose an output coordinate system we'll do this in the lab you'll and in class you'll get it it'll be much easier to understand projecting rasters you won't do any in this lab but the process process is pretty much the same you do project raster and make some choices and say OK and I'll guide you through those when we get to it export when we export data and you'll do that in lab 3 you choose either the layer source data the data frame or the for third one which is the feature data set you sport, export the data into we won't be using geodatabases so this one does not apply and actually we won't use the data frame the slide started out with having this one circled we don't want the data frame because we don't want to rely on ArcMap to make the changes for us. We want to use, we're going to set and use the source data. Feature data sets. Uh, similar to shape files and we'll always project them to match. Troubleshooting, we're going to zip through these quickly because we're going to make the right decisions to not have to troubleshoot if things don't show up right and here we have a bunch of layers not lining up yours may do this in the lab this is good because we're switching from not lining up to lining up so don't freak out when you see this and it asks what should you do what you should do is make sure all of your layers before you even put them in ArcMap are in the same coordinate system and projection for our purposes in this GIS course coordinate problems occur when two data sets that should map on top of each other don't and they're from two causes you're trying to use a data set with a missing coordinate system label which you may do in lab 3 or you're trying to use a data set with an incorrect coordinate system label and again we'll fix these issues before we get into them so we, we will not see these issues missing labels I'm going to skip we wouldn't get there although actually I must go back we this is exactly what you'll see in lab 3 if you do the Pacific Northwest labs lab 3 not the book lab we actually bring in places wa shapefile and we will see unknown spatial reference and that's when you have to define it because right here this is showing that it's not defined and then in that case you'll do define projection 
which we'll get to in a little bit further. Undefined undefined data sets are not projected on the fly. Whatever x, y values are in the file appear unchanged in the data frame coordinate system, and that's why we must define them. Undefined appear correctly, but it's because it's projecting on the fly, and we have to make sure it works or else our data is not going to line up and our, any analysis we do is not going to be valid. Here we have an undefined layer that doesn't show up and this is what we're trying to avoid. We're going to breeze over this. We're not going to get into the nitty-gritty. Fixing the problem is define projection. You will do that in the Pacific Northwest local lab Lab number three. We're going to avoid this error, so there's no use talking about it. We're going to be smarter than the computer. Same with this slide. We are going to define projection. Do not confuse projecting with defining a projection. This is the most common cause of coordinate system problems, and you will see this in lab, the lab that you do. You must define projection when there is an unknown coordinate system, and you project when there is a known coordinate system already in the data. And I'll try to drill that in during class and also during your lab. We'll skip this slide because we're going to avoid these problems. Same with this slide. Oh. Define projection and arc catalog coordinate system changes only modify the label of the coordinate system. Project creates a new data set and a different coordinate system. So define projection. What it's it's bear with me. When data comes from the census, we know that it has a certain projection. For example, NAD 1983. It happens to be exactly right as this slide. But for some reason, it's not set. So we have to tell the coordinates, tell the, tell ArcMap or Arc Catalog that we want to define it and say this is your real coordinate system. And we place that label on it by saying define projection. When we project, we actually create a very brand new data set, and that's why we usually rename them instead of roads shape, which could get confusing. We would do roads underscore project as the name dot shape. So roads underscore project dot shape. I'm going to go back one slide to 106 and explain this a little bit further. I skipped over it, but now I think it's important. Uh, faulty reasoning. If you have two different data sets and you want to display them together in UTM, what, the faulty reasoning here is saying that you need or thinking that you used to need, need to use define projection because you're not defining anything as you should have learned in the slide previous to this that I was just talking about. These two items already have a projection defined. We know that this is UTM zone 13, and we know that this is NAD 1983. If we were defi to define one of these, for example, the roads to UTM, we would be changing a, a label, and we wouldn't be labeling it properly. The easiest way to think about it is if there is already a projection or a coordinate system, then you use project. If there is no projection, if it's unknown, then you must define the projection. Let's continue. And here's some correct reasoning. I want to display roads and state together in UTM. 
This slide says let ArcMap project on the fly, and I'm going to say no. I, I think we should just cross that out. In fact, I should insert a shape and cross it out. We don't want that. It could be done, but we don't do that in this course. We would use the project tool to convert roads to UTM. So if it has a coordinate system, you project. That's what you need to remember. This is a great slide that helps you remember. Do not confuse these two functions. Define projection. Changes only the label. Does not change the coordinates. Keeps the original data set. And it's only used when the coordinate system is unknown or incorrect. That's the best thing you can do is to remember this. If the, it is unknown, then you use define projection. If it is known, then you use the project tool. You never use the project tool if you know the coordinate system in the original data. Take a mental image of this. I would even suggest taking a screenshot of this slide and putting it in your notes. When do I use the project tool? When I already have a projection. When do I use the define projection tool? When I'm assigning a projection to something that's unknown or known to be incorrect. And that's the most important aspect you can take away from this lesson. And that wraps up chapter 11. The rest of the information, you can see there is some more information, but it goes into geographic, uh, georeferencing rasters, which we don't need to cover in this course. So back to this last slide. Take a screenshot and put it in your brain, put it in your notes.